the spiritual practice of service. The spiritual practice of service is never about getting. It's about giving as Christ gave. Our service should come from our hearts based on what we've already received. It's not a path to salvation, rather a response we make after receiving the saving graces of Jesus Christ. While we do not serve others to obtain anything for ourselves, we gain much in the process, things like humility and compassion and serving. And serving becomes a way of life. And that's the preface to today's lesson. And today's lesson is Lesson 11, God's Grace Toward Adam and Eve and Cain. Thank you for joining with me this morning. In today's lesson, we're going to get into Genesis 3, 21 and 4, 10 through 16. The background text is Genesis 4, 1 through 16. And the purpose statement of today's lesson is to identify God's grace in the worst of our life's experiences. Are we experiencing that, some of that now? Have we had a recent death in the family? Are we frustrated and aggravated by the COVID-19 restrictions? Are we looking forward to the easing of the pain with that? So our key verse today is, The Lord God made the man and his wife leather clothes and dress them. He didn't have to do that. But he did do it. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and listen to the Bible passages for today's lesson. Thank you. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence, and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So from Revelations, images in the previous lesson of New Jerusalem, the life-giving river, and the tree of life. And with this te text, we're going to talk about Genesis. And we're going to go back to where it all began, obviously from the name. It's important to hold those to the scriptures together, knowing that we now are somewhere between Eden and a promised place. Reading Genesis quickly reveals how humans messed up paradise. And we tend to do that quite a lot. We keep messing with things until we break them. Genesis 4 is a heartbreaking chapter because it reminds us of how fragile life is and how seemingly easy it is to kill or die. We can so clearly see how easy it is to mess things up, how easy it is to sin, how you 
act now and repent later? It's like running a firing squad and saying, ready, fire, aim. But there's good news to this thing. The theme of the five lessons that we're going to have to finish up this series is while we look at the sin of man and the horrible thing that Cain did to his brother, we're going to celebrate the overwhelming love and grace that God pours out to us. And he pours that out to us every day. Sometimes we seek it. Sometimes it finds us. Sometimes it's just a clear, bright, crisp spring morning. So we're going to talk about an act of love and grace. Each of us can probably describe a time when we made a mess of things, but that someone came along and made it a little better. That's almost the story of my life. I remember as a young boy suffering the disappointment of my mother when I uh, went into her kitchen and took out a cheese grater, the ones that you get like at uh, Olive Garden when they ask you how much Parmesan cheese you want and they turn the handle. Well, when I found that thing, the cheese grater, that was the greatest outdoor excavator that I ever found as a kid. I took it out in the yard, opened it up, scooped the mud into the grater, turned that little crank, and I was having a ball till Mom showed up. Took me inside, explained to me about why I couldn't do stuff like that, took the grater away from me, and said she was disappointed in me. And then she banned me from using any of her kitchen utensils. That was the worst punishment of all. However, there was grace. She didn't ban me from the kitchen. She allowed me to stay there. She taught me how to cook. But she wouldn't let me use any of her utensils. So, lesson learned. So let's have a flashback to the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit, they were embarrassed to find themselves naked. So they wanted to cover up and they were trying to sew fig leaves together paint an image of sewing fig leaves together and think to yourself, how long would that last? And what would it look like when you got done? Probably not a good project. I thank God that it was fig leaves and not okra leaves. That would have been an itching process. So, what did God do? God didn't laugh. God didn't turn away. He made them leather clothes to clothe themselves. He was being gracious. The Lord God made the man and his wife leather clothes and dressed them. Verse 21. What a gracious gift from God made without comment to cover the shame and the vulnerability of Adam and Eve. An act of love is more than simple charity. Just as we received such acts of love and grace, we also have opportunities to extend them to others. Our loving and gracious God set the example for us. And it's a good example for us to follow. So think about this. When have you received or extended grace in the form of an act of love?
Now we're going to talk about acts of justice. Be kind when you can and be just when you must. Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve, we all know the story. Cain presented an offering to the Lord from the land's crop. Abel presented an offering of the oldest offspring. The Lord looked favorable on Abel and his sacrifice, but did not look favorable on Cain and his sacrifice. Cain became angry and looked resentful. God warned Cain about anger and resentment and the sin waiting at the door if he acted on those. Cain did not master his sin waiting at the door. He killed his brother. God knew all about it. He knows everything. But he asked, where's Abel? I don't know, Cain replied. What did you do? I guess he found out you can't lie to the Lord. It's an opportunity to realize that grace does not mean that everything is okay. Grace is always costly. God's grace to us through Jesus' death on the cross was grace at the highest cost. It seems incredible that God punished Cain by taking away his ability to farm the land. Was that an act of justice? Cain bore responsibilities for his terrible action, just as Adam and Eve bore responsibilities for their disobedience to God and his commandments regarding the tree. So, another question for you to ponder. When have you experienced God's grace to the world through an act of justice? Where in your life do you need for justice to be offered as an expression of God's grace? Now, an act of protection. Cain was inconsolable when he heard the justice placed upon his life by God. My punishment is more than I can bear. I have nothing to protect me from the worst possible acts. Sometimes we feel hopeless. When the consequences of our actions bring destruction to our lives, we are consumed with fear and think of how lost our future seems to be. It's not remorse. It's simply our belief that we're defenseless and powerless against whatever person wants to take revenge against us. The greatest good news of this story is that God's response to Cain's hopeless words his worst fears would not happen. The punishment of banishment was enough. Cain's defenseless life would be protected by God, who put a mark on him. We don't know what the mark was, but God put a mark on him to protect him. The Lord put a sign on Cain so that no one who found him would assault him. Cain settled somewhere east of Eden in the land of Nod, 
Nun means wandering, and it also relates to the Hebrew term that translates to nomad. The grace of God that cares for us when we have sinned is amazing. God is just, but in administering his justice, God still loves and cares for us. So a final thought before we end. What does it tell you about God that when we have done something horrible, God still offers grace? And how will we extend grace to others the way God does when they've offended us? Think about those things. Now, let us pray. God of grace, put your sign on me this day and protect me by your great love. Show me ways to extend your love and grace to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and may you all have a blessed day.